all right students bismillahir rahmanir rahim the topic for today is accounting concepts uh, what are accounting concepts accounting concepts also known as accounting principles are certain set of rules that must be followed while preparing financial statements when i talk about financial statements i mean income statement and statement of financial position so there are many concepts that are being applied by the accountants in order to ensure that the accounts are showing the true and fair position of any business okay so there are many concepts and let me go through this question and in this question uh, all of the top concepts have been applied in a single question okay so let us read what has been done and which concept is applicable in that case so first of all beta let me read the question for you guys hamar limited provided some recent transaction that affected his business complete the table identifying the name of the principal that has been applied in each case the first item has been completed as an example so beta first of all uh, it is transaction a when preparing the income statement an adjustment was made to an expense account to record a prepayment now my dear students uh, you must remember what does an a prepaid means and accrued expense means so whenever there is any adjustment relating to prepaid and accrued it is being done based on the concept of accruals and the newer name for accrual concept beta is matching concept what does matching concept means sir matching concept means my dear students that income is being matched against the expenses for the same period but expenses are being matched against the income for the same period what does this actually means matching concept matching concepts uh, ensures that income and expenses shall be okay so beta matching concept says that income and expenses shall be recorded in the period to which they relate and not the period in which cash is actually received or paid now let me uh, explain you with the help of a simple example let us suppose that monthly rent is $1000 okay so the annual rent would be 1000 multiplied by 12 it would be $12000 okay so annual rent of the premises that the business uh, we are doing in is 12000 sir what if we have paid 10000 rent only this year and have used the space for the entire year so beta it it means that out of 12000 rent that is actually there for the year we have just paid the rent 10000 so this means 2000 of the rent is accrued okay so you must remember from your earlier studies that accrued is added at the end of the year okay so income statement should be charged with the entire 12000 rent and not the rent that we have actually paid that is 10000 why because we are, if we have used the premises to generate revenue for the entire 12 months so therefore the rent of the entire year should also be charge to this year income statement no matter whether the last two months rent has been paid or it is accrued so it is an application of matching concept and matching concept can also be applied by the way of prepaid for example uh, annual rent is 12000 but we have paid how much rent we have paid it for 15 months that is 15000 now uh, even if we have paid the rent for 15 months we aren't going to charge 15000 rent in the income statement why because this year beta we have just used the rent that is uh, 12 months so the extra rent for 3 months that we have paid that is $3000 is a prepaid and prepaid is subtracted at the end of the year okay so in any case uh, the income statement should contain the expense for the year that is 12000 not that we have actually paid okay it is known as a matching concept now let us move further account should only include items with a monetary value monetary value means financial value now there is an accounting concept with the name of money measurement concept that is being applied in this case what does money measurement concept means beta money measurement concept means that in the accounting records in the financial statements only items that can be recorded are those with a monetary value are those with a financial value anything that cannot be 
recorded in financial terms or that cannot be estimated uh, we, we cannot record that item and what would be the example for that for example beta we have bought an air conditioner or a heater and we have bought it for ten thousand dollars and that can be recorded in the income uh, sofp obviously statement of financial position because we have paid this much amount of dollars for that and the electricity bill or gas bill that we are uh, getting on the usage of that air conditioner or heater this can also be recorded because it is also monetary value sir uh, but we cannot uh, record the comfort or the convenience or the benefit or the uh, enjoyment that we are getting by the use of this air conditioner okay so anything that cannot be measured in financial terms shouldn't be recorded in the financial statement and that what we call money measurement concept okay if you have any confusion please do ask the directors of the company decided to record inventory of stationery as an asset only if they are over 500 uh, there is a concept known as materiality concept and what does materiality concept means materiality uh, in general means only material transaction should be recorded and there is no fixed definition uh, uh, as to what amount constitute a material amount and what amount is basically immaterial amount it varies from person to person and organization to organization for some uh, big organization multinationals maybe a hundred thousand dollar is also an immaterial amount but for a small business corner shop a sole trader uh, maybe a hundred dollar is also a material amount okay so this was the general definition of materiality and how does materiality concept works uh, let us suppose better we have bought a calculator or a hole punch uh, or maybe a stapler okay these are all uh, although these stationary items uh, have a life of more than one year but still we aren't going to record these as a non-current asset and why is that so because their value is very immaterial okay so anything that is uh, immaterial in value and this materiality depends on organization to organization and in this case the directors have decided that we will record an asset only if it's worth more than 500 and if it's 500 or less than that we are going to record it as an expense okay so this is what materiality means that small items of asset shouldn't be recorded as a non-current asset because then we have to worry about depreciating those as well so therefore we are only going to uh, record it as an expense note d a business transaction and the owner private transaction recorded separately in the business accounting system see whenever we prepare an accounts we whenever we prepare accounts accounts are usually prepared for uh, businesses and not the owner okay so if owner owns a business uh, no matter if the owner owns a business 100 percent or there are uh, separate partners business should also be kept separate from its owners this means business income statement should only contain business income and business expenses and what if sir if the owner has uh, spent some amount for his personal use for home use then therefore it is not a business expense instead it is termed as a drawing okay so drawing is basically the concept uh, and on which the relevant principle is that is being applied is known as business entity or accounting entity so what does business entity and accounting entity means better business entity and accounting entity means that the business is separate from its owners okay we should not mix business transaction and the owner's private transaction okay if i own a business and uh, my kids are going to school uh, and i am paying my school uh, my children school fees using my business funds and this is not a business expense it is my personal expense and therefore it is a drawing and not the business expense okay and if i'm putting some money into the business and this is from my personal income then this is not the business other income uh, instead it is a capital investment by the owner into the business okay so the owner transaction and the business transaction should also be kept should uh, always be kept separate now let us see which other concepts do we have transactions of a similar nature should be recorded in the same way and in the same accounting period and in all future accounting period 
what does this mean this means we should not show our talent every time while making accounts the account should be prepared using same policies using same formats using same uh, basis okay and this is the concept which is known as consistency concept consistency concept my dear student says you have to be consistent while preparing accounts and you should not change the accounting policies let us suppose first year you are using straight line method second year you thought that straight line is not very interesting or maybe your profit uh, is more uh, using straight line and you should consider going for reducing balance now this is not allowed okay uh, accounting concept says you have to follow consistency while preparing accounts uh, businesses cannot do that that one year we are applying straight line second year we go for reducing and third year we go for revaluation this thing is basically not allowed but there can be another scenario what if sir a business is using straight line for its building than furniture and that's what recommended for building and furniture it's a straight line method then the business is applying reducing balance method for maybe motor vehicles and computers and for small value assets low value assets such as tools business is using revaluation uh, is this a violation of consistency no it's not because the different methods are used for different class of assets okay you can always apply different accounting methods and that for different uh, methods are meant for okay so you can use different methods for different class of assets but you cannot do that uh, that for a honda you are applying straight line and for a toyota you are applying reducing this is not allowed one method should be used for the entire class of assets and that method shall be used uh, from one year to the next we are not supposed to change the method every time okay let us move further salaries unpaid at the end of the year unpaid means accrued are added to business expense they are still charged as an expense and shown as a current liability in the statement of financial position now what is this beta uh, just remember when it, whenever it's accrued unpaid means accrued or prepaid always we apply concept which one matching concept okay uh, accruals in prepayment are always applied which concept matching concept matching concept beta says income and expense shall be matched for the same accounting period it's a matching concept now let us move further payment of salary by check we have paid salary by check salary is an expense obviously has been debited to the salary account why because salary is an expense and expense has a debit nature you must have learned previously that aed asset expense drawing arab emirates dirham aed is debit in nature and lic life insurance company liability income and capital is credit in nature so whenever we are paying salary the entry would be salary would be debited and bank is being credited why because bank is an asset whenever asset increases it is debited and whenever asset goes down it would be credited so we have just made a double entry and is there any concept relating to double entry sir yes there is another concept known as dual aspect concept now the list of these concepts is available in your workbook okay you must go through these as well i have uh, wrote the definitions of all of these concepts what does dual aspect or duality concept means but a dual aspect or duality concept means for every transaction there are two aspects one is debit and another one is credit okay so whenever we are applying a double entry this means it is a dual aspect concept next it is assumed that the business will continue to operate for an indefinite period of time in finite period of time and that there is no intention to close down the business but there is a special accounting concept for that as well and which is named as going concern concept sir so what is a going concern going concern means beta uh, that at the end of each year the directors of company swear okay among themselves and the the swear that they take it is known as a going concern what does this mean this means the directors swear that we are going to continue this business and neither there is problem in their intention nor there is problem in their ability okay they are able as well that they can continue the business and they are uh 
in, uh, their their intent is also good and there is ability is also good okay whenever there is intention and ability that they will continue for a foreseeable future foreseeable future assumption basically means here 12 months okay so every year they renew this uh contract that they do uh, with themselves okay so this is known as a going concern so sir what happens if the going concern is not valid what happens if the business is going to be closed down uh, next year what happens so basically uh, there is a concept uh, known as a depreciation that we uh, learned previously let me uh, show you with the help of an example uh, let me explain you with the help of an example for example we bought an air conditioner for 100000 okay 1 lakh and uh, the life of that air conditioner is 4 years and we are going to apply a straight line for example so 1 lakh divided by 4 years straight line this means each year our air conditioner is being depreciated by how much by 25000 okay 1 lakh divided by 4 years 25000 so 1 lakh minus 25,000, this means at the end of the year, uh, the asset net book value is 75,000. Okay, cost minus accumulated depreciation is basically NBV net book value. So beta, after one year, the net book value that is remaining in our books is how much? It is 75,000. Now we are going to keep it on 75,000 if the business is going to continue in the future sir what if the going concern is not valid and we are going to close down this business anytime soon okay if we are going to close down wind up this business then the air conditioner shouldn't be recorded at its net book value of seventy five thousand. instead it should be recorded at its current market value for example we will take estimate from the uh, electronic dealer that deals in second hand air conditioners and we are going to ask him that how much he is willing to pay for an air conditioner like this if we are going to sell him in one or two months so let us suppose uh, he says that i am going to offer you only 40000 for that and in that case we are going to record the air conditioner on the 40000 market value and not the book value so let me summarize it for you if the business is a going concern and if the business is continue uh, is going to continue for the next 12 months then the asset shall be recorded at its net book value and if the business is going to close down anytime soon and if the going concern is not valid then we are going to record this asset on not the net book value but the market value also known as for sale value okay then we have another concept beta premises bought for one lakh was recorded at that price that is one one lakh even though it was valued at a higher price beta we have bought the premises for one lakh and we are still using this value in our sofp and for depreciation as well although the market rate is higher now this concept is known as historical cost concept but historical cost concept says that assets uh, shall be recorded at their original value original value means the value that we have originally paid while acquiring that asset okay and not the market value so therefore we are not supposed to revise the value again and again based on the market value and we are going to just keep that asset on the original cost okay it is known as historical cost concept Profit and asset should not be overvalued and liabilities are not undervalued. What does this mean? Profit and assets shall not be overstated. So there is a concept, very well known concept known as prudence. So prudence is very important. But what does prudence mean? Uh, prudence usually means two things. Prudent, uh, if we talk about the word itself, it's a general word. Being prudent means being cautious okay you have to be very careful and you have to choose your every step okay and you uh, can't be very casual and you have to be very calculated and this means prudent approach prudent very careful move very informed move okay we have to do your homework before go going to go for this step this is basically prudent approach now how does prudent what does prudence means while preparing accounts Prudence concept basically means two things. 
one thing that prudence says that profits and assets shall not be overstated prudence means we shouldn't be uh, overstating our profit and asset you must remember when you were kids although you are kids right now as well but still you are, are now grown ups and uh, what happened when we were small and there were in every classroom there were one or two uh, kids like that and uh, they would like to show off themselves okay they would like to uh, overstate their fathers their parents income and the assets that they have that they would would say that we have four cars or five cars and we do not know how many cars we have and some cars are lost and we are uh, still looking for those cars so they wanted to be the center of attention okay they wanted to stand out of the crowd by saying that they, we are very rich okay the word we use we are filthy rich okay so what was the intention they wanted to be stand out of other people and they wanted people uh, kids of the of the class they used to uh, give them some respect or protocol because they are very elite class okay so this is against prudence concept and when these kids are grown up and they become directors of the company they still do the same thing with the company okay they used to uh, over show over value the assets and profits okay they used to show the business uh, more successful than the business actually is uh, okay and this is against the prudence concept okay prudent approach means you have to show the true picture to your shareholders and you cannot uh, show the assets more than they actually are and you cannot show the income more than it actually is okay this is the prudence concept and prudence also says one more thing that if there is there is a loss that is going to happen sometimes in the future that loss shall be booked immediately and if there is an income that we are going to earn in the future that income shouldn't be recorded once this income has been materialized okay once this income has been realized so this is also prudence concept prudence means the profits sh shall not be booked once the profits are confirmed but loss can be booked on the estimated basis even though the loss does not happens actually and in that case we can reverse that transaction but for now we should book the uh, losses immediately you must remember beta whenever we are going to do whenever we are you must remember whenever uh, we were studying a uh, matching concept whenever we were studying depreciation and provision for doubtful debt uh, uh, the uh, uh, prudence and matching is always applied also on the provision for doubtful debt and also on the depreciation and how we are going to apply the prudence uh, on uh, depreciation for example beta depreciation is an expense and if we aren't booking the depreciation expense then therefore we are overstating our assets okay and what happens if we aren't uh, depreciating the assets the assets are also being overstated in the sofp that is balance sheet so this is we how apply prudence concept now let us see the next transaction receive rent from a tenant okay tenant is a person who is using our premises in exchange for rent and transfer to the income statement we have received the rent and transfer it to income statement okay take into account of the fact that the tenant owed an amount for rent at year end uh, what does this mean this means the tenant uh, owed an amount for rent at year end so this means the the tenant has not yet paid the entire amount but still we have recorded this uh, why because the income has been realized and how are we are sure that income has been realized beta uh, if the year is ending on december and the tenant has just paid 10 months rent that is till october but he has used the premises for november and december as well so therefore we can book the income now even though the income has not been received and it is accrued so just remember whenever there is an accrued and prepayment in the question then the concept would be matching concept okay whenever beta there is an accruals and prepayment in the question it is always termed as which concept it is termed as a matching concept now there are some other uh, transactions as well uh, let me read the scenario first what does this mean scenario is complete the following table to show which accounting principle or concept would be violated if the business performed the action stated 
okay in the previous part we were supposed to tell that which concept we are applying and in this part it is the other way around we just need to tell that which concept we are violating this it means the same thing only the way to ask is different changes the rate of depreciation each year beta we are changing depreciation every year so it is against which concept it is against consistency principle okay we have to be consistent while preparing accounts and we shouldn't be using uh, new rates or new methods for every year secondly decided to stop maintaining provision for depreciation but uh, if we aren't uh, charging depreciation if we have stopped charging depreciation which concepts uh, would be violated uh, the, there is a prudence that is being applied and there is also another concept that is matching okay we have just uh, discussed about prudence on depreciation let us discuss matching on depreciation so how can beta depreciation uh, is a, a application of matching principle beta for example if we have bought a uh, uh, projector maybe and multimedia projector and the life of that projector is 3 years and we have paid 600 dollar for buying this projector so uh, instead of charging the entire 600 dollar for the first year we are going to treat this 600 dollar as a non current asset why because we are going to use it for the next 3 years and for each year assuming we are applying a straight line method we are going to charge the depreciation of 2 200 for each years uh, each of the years okay and 200 of the depreciation should be charged in the expense for each year and after one year the book value remains 400 after second year the book value is only 200 and after third year the book value would go to zero okay this means we have used the asset completely and the entire amount is being uh, pa uh, charged to income statement over the course of 3 years okay so this is a matching concept for depreciation charges personal expense to business income statement we just studied a concept that business should be treated separate from its owners and that is accounting entity beta or business entity okay business is separate and the owner is separate not recording an expected loss to the current year resulting in overstatement of profit so if we haven't recorded the loss and due to which uh, profit is overstated so which concept prohibits us to overstate the profit and that is prudence concept okay prudence means to show the true picture of the business and to show the both sides of the business and to show the worst scenario or not the best case scenario okay prudent approach means to work on the best uh, not uh, work on the uh, worst case result and not the best case result okay record the purchase of a small item worth 20 as a separate asset if we have recorded uh, an item worth 20 dollar as a separate asset which concept would be violated and it will be a materiality concept okay materiality concept beta means that we shouldn't be recorded small uh, items as a separate asset instead we should be recorded at as an expense okay place the value on the technical skill of the workforce if our staff is getting better in their work day to day the technical know how and technical knowledge and their skill is improving so therefore still we cannot record the technical skill of the workforce in the financial statement because we cannot measure that okay and uh, there is an, one more reason for that as well because ji sir and the skill of the workforce shouldn't be recorded in the financial statement why because one thing is that uh, first point is that we cannot measure that skill and second point is that uh, these uh, staff are not your slaves they can leave your organization whenever they want so therefore we cannot record the staff knowledge in the financial statements okay and it is known as a money measurement concept okay money measurement concept beta states uh, in the accounts we cannot record anything we should only record things that are recorded in money terms all right beta this is another uh, point excluded an expense unpaid from the financial statement beta if we haven't paid the expense this doesn't mean we shouldn't record it either okay even if we haven't paid for the expense this should still be recorded and there is a concept whenever beta there is an accrued and prepayment Uh, being applied the concept is 
मैचिंग कॉन्सेप्ट ओके मैचिंग कॉन्सेप्ट मीन बेटा इनकम एंड एक्सपेंसिस शेल बी मैच फॉर द सेम अकाउंटिंग पीरियड इनकम एंड एक्सपेंस शेल बी मैच फॉर द सेम अकाउंटिंग पीरियड Without delivery of goods to the customer, this is the new one. You haven't uh, heard of it before. Without delivery of goods to the customer, treating the amount received in advance as income to the business. Uh, what, uh, what what does this mean, Brita? This means uh, there is a concept known as the realization concept. And what is realization concept, sir? Realization concept, Brita, means uh, revenue can only be booked. once it is realized and when does sales is realized realization concept beta says that revenue should only be booked once the goods are delivered okay if we haven't delivered the goods yet we cannot book it as a revenue okay if we haven't beta realization concept means we cannot book the revenue once we have delivered the goods okay let me uh, give you an example example is that uh, it was uh, 2022 recently okay and in december uh, a company any company for example honda or toyota they booked uh, many vehicles and the customers paid them some amount of advance but they cannot book it as a revenue until those goods have been delivered to the customers okay if they haven't delivered the vehicles yet they cannot book the revenue revenue beta can only be booked once the goods have been delivered okay and once the services have been provided if we have received the money from the customers but for which we haven't yet provided the services then the revenue cannot be recognized okay it's a realization concept explain the term historical cost we have already discussed beta historical cost previously historical cost concept means the asset shall be recorded at its original cost what is original cost means beta original cost means the amount that we have actually paid while buying that asset it is known as historical cost concept recording assets in the sfp statement of financial position at their original cost that is the price that was originally paid when acquiring the asset and not the price that is currently in the market okay so we are aren't going to consider the market price instead we are going to record at the original cost that is the price that we actually paid while acquiring that asset 